Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2016 ITTF World Tour, the Swedish Open. It's a major series on the World Tour. I'm your commentator, Adam Bobro. We are getting in to the women's singles final. Live from Stockholm, Sweden, there's Humelek from Turkey playing against already on court the number one seed, Kasumi Ishikawa from Japan. Umpires are Benny Sanmu of Sweden and Wong Tech Young of Malaysia. Our officials for the match. Umpire Benny Sanmo from Sweden. And from Malaysia, Wong Tech Young, our assistant umpire. So Kasumi Ishikawa living up to her reputation and the expectations of the number one seed so far. She has one more match to complete the prophecy and take the title. There's her coach, Gao Yu Yao, in the corner. And we can expect to see Ha Kai. There he is. So Humilek, 27 years old, was world ranked number 27 last month. In November, after winning the European Championship, is now world ranked number 18. She's been playing quite well here as well. Wouldn't be surprised to see her climbing up in the rankings even more. She's the 11th seed in the tournament. Checking out each other's equipment, Kasumi Ishikawa is going to look at the short pips, the amount of thickness, the sponge on the racket. They each checked out each other's equipment just to make sure they're familiar. So Humelek got to determine the serve. It seemed like Kasumi Ishikawa chose which side she would like to stand on. So while they have their two minute warm up, I will tell you that head to head they've only played once. And despite Kasumi Ishikawa being the first seed in world rank number six, that one time they played, Humelek won. But it was eight years ago, the Singapore TMS Open. It has been quite a while since they've faced off. And Kasumi Ishikawa, eight years ago, was quite young, only 15 years old. Bumelek would have been 19. And those are some developmental years in the table tennis player's game. If you look at the top 15-year-olds, this is why we have the World Junior Championships coming up. That being said, in the women's game, from Japan, there are several 15-year-olds, or were 15-year-olds last year were quite threatening. Mima Ito was in the top 10 at 15. Tomokazu Harimoto, 13 years old, was 12 years old when he took an under 21 title earlier this year. Very impressive performance over Kohei Sambe. But Kasumi Ishikawa, service versatility, one serve that I find, I think she's developed a bit and has brought out more in this tournament than I've seen before is that shovel serve where she scoops under and around the ball, but does it very subtly. And gets a lot of points that way. People have trouble reading the spin on the ball. It looks like there's top spin on it sometimes. It doesn't have to be under spin, but if it looks like there's top spin and there's no spin, that's enough to fool somebody. Fast serve into the backhand to start it off, and Ishikawa takes the first point. Fast long serve into the backhand again. Some gutsy play from Ishikawa, but she can only strike it so many times before Humelek starts to predict it. One, two. That opening attack with the backhand from Humelek very fast and wide is going to be stretching Ishi uh, Ishikawa out. Well, Ishikawa's strong on the wings. She just doesn't have the reach that Humelek has. If she plays it that quickly off the bounce, Humelek is going to get a lot of points to the length of the table with that backhand. So far, every serve of Ishikawa's has been deep to the backhand. I guess in theory, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. She can serve there every single serve. 
As long as she's winning the points, why would she stop? So far, continuing the streak, four serves long to the backhand. This one a much longer rally, didn't immediately set up an easy winner for Ishikawa. But even from a psychological standpoint, doing something where you're winning the point, whether it's the third shot of the rally or the 23rd shot of the rally, keep doing it, it's working. Two, five. Well placed on the block. So again, eight years have passed since they played and by world ranking, it's sort of clear the development is on the, I'd say favoring Kasumi Ishikawa. But we'll see out here. European champion from Turkey. Winning that Five, point with three. the backhand. Very smooth, steady backhand shot. From the quarterfinals, Humelek showed that she has very clean, crisp uh, strokes out here. First point that Kasumi Ishikawa's lost serving. Now one thing about serving long into the pips is that it's gonna be deep on the table and with less topspin, or the ability to generate less topspin. It's gonna be a tougher shot, less dangerous, you're less at risk than serving into an inverted rubber where someone can get a very strong loop, and confidently bring it down on the table. The same can be said about long pips even more so. If you have trouble playing against long pip players, serve it long with no spin into their long pips. It's gonna be very difficult for them to attack it and you're most likely gonna get a ball back long with no spin on it or very light spin. Five. Very animated Kasumi Ishikawa out there doing a little bit of self shadow coaching. And the catch off the edge of the racket would be the first time we've seen that. Not even the first time today. Left, six, eight. Seven, eight. So Humelek closing in, a once three point lead for Ishikawa. Now just a one point lead. Left, seven, eight. Look at this, surprise, surprise out to the open forehand side. A little flip of the wrist and it goes to the backhand side. Look at how strong the Japanese contingency is here, how large it is. Again, so many participants on the men's and women's side. I actually learned that about half of those players are paying their own way. Only the top six or seven on the men's and women's side are covered by the association. Nine, eight. Reminds me of when Masato Shiono won the Japan Open. Wasn't even one of the sponsored players, not on the national team, and beat everybody who came. Anybody who was in his way, on his path to the championship. Yeah. Ishikawa now with two game points. Third towel break of the game.
Top of the net and out, one game point left to go. Humelek closing in. Short side of the table, big risk right there. Humelek sets up the third ball attack. Nishikawa just a bit too soft. And by soft, I mean careful. I guess if she left that even shorter on the table, touched it a little softer, might not have been such an easy opening attack, but the length of that serve was difficult. I think a flip is what's needed there. Attempted long push, not a bad idea if it's heavy or deeper on the table. But in the exchange here, Ishikawa uses her serve wisely to set up the point and earn game points. Very similar serve, the opening backhand. Backhand for the angle off the side of the table and a fist clinched as Kasumi Ishikawa earns game one 12 to 10. This is the women's singles final. Game one is done, it's in the bag. In game two, we'll see what happens. It should be close. Game two coming up right after this short break. Men hon mötte på en väldigt stor motgång i somras när hon deltog i OS i Rio. Redan i första omgången så åkte hon ut mot en totalt okänd spelare, Kim i song från Nordkorea. Denna Kim skulle sedan gå hela vägen till semifinal och slutligen kamma hem bronspengen mot alla odds till synes. Men för Ishikawa var det ett stort, stort avbräck. Hon har gett uttryck för att hon nu vill komma vidare och kasta av sig skuggorna från den förlusten som hon själv har uttryckt det. Detta är hennes första tävling sedan OS i Rio. Hon hoppas att vägen mot nya stordåd den börjar här i Stockholm och Eriksdalshallen. Players come back for game two. Humelek trailing zero games to one. Kasumi Ishikawa in the lead at the top of the screen. Who to serve? Zero, zero. Humelek starting off with the serve. Let. Zero, zero. Outstanding exchange back and forth. The wide forehands come back strong. Humelik punching with some pace. Yao Yi Yao, quite supportive and I guess satisfied. Watching a relaxed Ishikawa get everything back. This is a much better response to a long push. Keeps it deep and then covers the short side of the table. Quickly opening up. Top spin from the backhand side. Ishikawa hasn't dropped a point yet. Score wise, it's a flawless first three points. It's one of my favorite serves that Ishikawa does. The ball bends back into the backhand side. Looks like the pendulum serve. Would love to see it perfect. High toss. Right at the point of contact, actually hits just around the back of the ball to bend it the other way. It's a very unusual serve and it's very subtle. I don't know if Ishikawa is the, in the innovator of that serve. I think it's a great serve to try and practice to add to your game if you can. One of the best things about watching the pros regularly is the inspiration from subtleties to what's important to creativity on serve as well. First towel break of the game, Ishikawa in a good position. Rushing out to an early lead, looking quite confident and comfortable. A lot of people tend to tense up or freak out when they're playing against pips. 
Short pips, long pips, any type. But knowing how to adjust, just being very clear on your plan can pay off. Yeah. For Ishikawa, it's an open face of the racket. Whenever it comes off the backhand, she's just changing the angle a little bit. Giving a little bit more lift to the ball. Ishikawa brings it right back, blocks the shot to the short side and turns for the forehand winner. The 2014 World Tour Grand Finals in Thailand was the most impressive play I've ever seen from Kasumi Ishikawa. $100,000 prize money for winning that tournament. Ishikawa's last match, 4-3, the one before it, 11, well, 11 to one in game seven. So she's played some long matches. This one is off to a good start for Ishikawa. If she keeps up this performance, it could be the shortest match we've seen since our TV broadcast started. Quick punch out to the forehand. Humelek trying something new here. Still a high risk shot, has to be right to the corner. Persistent play keeps Kasumi jumping back to the backhand. And much like Kasumi's first uh, four points in game one, long serve to the backhand to start it off. Now six game points for Kasumi Ishikawa to take a two to zero lead. I think we're gonna have to see some more risk from Humelek if she wants to have a real fighting chance, whether it's the opening backhand strong, step around forehands. Ishikawa takes it 11 to four for a two to zero lead. And we'll be back for game three and see what happens when both players come back game three right after this. Game number three of the women's singles final. Kasumi Ishikawa of Japan starting off with the serve. 2-0 over Humelek. 0-0 in this game. 0-2. not finding the middle, looking for it on Ishikawa. Ishikawa a bit smaller in stature.
power now from Humelec. We're seeing a little bit different initiative. Going for a bit more drive, a little flatter shots. Again with the short fifth side of the racket, it's gonna be tougher to generate spin. We will see flatter shots out of Humelec. Back edge of the table, Humelec takes the point. Two, three. Fired up, Ishikawa ties it up. In case you were curious how Humelec got here in the opening round, she beat Marie Migo from France, four games to one. Then 4-2 over Yang Xiaoxin of Monaco. She's taken some titles in her past as well, recently actually. So a very strong player to put Monaco on the map. 4-1 over Kyoka Kato, the defeater of Mima Ito in this tournament. And then 4-3 over Jun Jihee. Yang Haying, um, excuse me, Han Ying. <laughs> that was a little combination of Yang Haun and Han Ying, but it was Han Ying who was defeated by Hu Melek in the last round. Timeout called. Umelek quick to get over to Hu Kui, her coach. It's a good time, it's a best of seven. But being down 0 3 might be too late. It's partially a sense of hope, what seems achievable for the players. Now one thing Humelec did quite well throughout this match, well, throughout her matches so far, is she's played the ball wide to the forehand, deep to the backhand. Bye. But these shots that are low and fast and wide, she's made them in succession, in combination. And it really takes advantage of the fact that her opponents are a little bit on the shorter side, might not be able to cover the ground so quickly or have the wingspan necessary to make quality shots in response. But on the receive, we'll see what happens. Go! The attempt is there to go wide to the forehand and wide back to the backhand. But it wasn't wide enough, and Ishikawa's pressure from the forehand side took over control of the rally. That's wide enough. This ball exits the side of the table, and even though it takes a little bit more time from Humelec, See, Ishikawa is going to have some distance to go, and she also wants to keep herself fairly centered. She needs to play every ball as best she can, but is also conscious of her positioning on the table for the next shot. For example, you could see there, as soon as she got to the forehand, her weight was back and centered, and she covered and moved right back to the center of the table. Ready to cover the backhand shot, or the shot to the backhand down the line. All sorts of awkward yeah, shots in the beginning from the slow spinny shot from Ishikawa early on. <clears throat> Brought right back into play and the Chinese fans cheer for Ishikawa. Or I could say the Ishikawa fans cheer in Chinese. Step around inside out forehand, Ishikawa steps up to a two point lead. This could be the first relatively fast match we've seen. In the commentator's booth, everybody has a beard. We didn't Left. when we started. Six, eight. Six, nine. The apology from Ishikawa for the fortune off the top of the net. 
But the scoreboard, much like Shakira's hips, don't lie. Three-point lead for Kasumi Ishikawa on the receive. And now four game points to crack the pinata open and go up to a three to zero lead. Ishikawa still has to focus. Finish this game. Stay focused for the next. Quick focus, long serve to the middle of the table with light spin and Ishikawa 11 to six. Dominating right now, a three to zero lead. And Humelek has no lifelines left. We'll see what happens. Game four could be the last. Women's singles finals game four right after this. Vi kan konstatera att Kazumi Ishikawa har varit i semifinal på Pro Touren 20 gånger. Åtta gånger så har det renderat en finalplats för henne. Och för Humelek så är det här blott hennes andra framträdande i final på Pro Touren. Ingen av dessa framträdande har slutat med total vinst. Det har det däremot gjort flertalet gånger för hennes japanska motståndare. Back for game number four, Kasumi Ishikawa up three to zero over Humelek from Turkey with the serve. Zero one. Back edge of the table, Ishikawa, sorry. But she's leading 2-0 once again. Three, zero. This is how you use a fast long serve right at the baseline of the table. Well placed into the hip and that's how you react. Yuka Ishigaki showing us from the crowd. But it's on the body, it's tough to move. Zero four. For the past few years now, Kasumi Ishikawa has been the top player of the Japanese women. The second strongest nation in the world for table tennis in the women's game. And according to the world championships, the men's as well. Outstanding pace back and forth. First point for Humelek. Again, this is a 3-0 lead for Ishikawa. She's in good position. She just needs to keep up the fight for every point. This is what has kept her in the top 10 in the world for some time. Heavy topspin on the forehand. Full stroke and a very faint brushing contact. Soft sound. This is when only the rubber is involved and the vibration doesn't reach through to the blade. out there. Kasumi Ishikawa trying to pump herself up, stay motivated. Works hard for these points, covers a few backhands, takes a big forehand, still recovers. And even the best in the world have their video cameras out to study for later. A library of their matches. Let's Two, seven. Back.
backhand to backhand, trying to open it up wide. The pressure to make it super wide. If that ball is just a clear forehand, Ishikawa's gonna finish the point. She demonstrated in the quarterfinals how much power a five foot two woman can have. She works hard and times it right. Nine, two. Now two points away from a clean sweep for the championship, for the title. That's one way to do it. Come down on the ball, punch through. Very wide shot here. What it takes to get a point from Kasumi Ishikawa right now. Kasumi had a chance at that one. Ball comes down short on the table. Still, Humelek plays it deep to the backhand corner. Safe for placement, but it was also right where Ishikawa was. Let four nine. Let four nine. My goodness, the combination. When Kasumi gets that forehand in the play, it seems like the point's gonna be over. But Humelek has a better response, counters it deep cross court in that short, punchy backhand. Timeout. To the very depth of the table, this is a good timeout by Gao Yu Yao uh, for Kasumi Mikkel Ishikawa. Two points away from the title. Sounds like they're speaking Mandarin. He's trying to listen closely. Gao Yu Yao, natively a Mandarin speaker. Asumi Ishikawa speaks, I hear, fluent Mandarin, but definitely a high level. Had a chance to interview her with some Mandarin questions for Ask a Pro Anything. Back from the timeout, first point goes to Hu Malek. This is big for the confidence of Humelek and makes it more exciting in terms of the unpredictability of the next several points. Seven, nine, seven. Nine. Seven, nine instead of 10, six. That is a bit of a break. Ishikawa was stuck right in the middle on that half-long serve. Couldn't decide to flip, to attack, play the push, and so she gave back a dead ball, and Humelek lifts it up and out. Three championship points for the number one seed, 23-year-old Kasumi Ishikawa. Not so fast. Humelek saves one right down the line. Ishikawa even stretching out the face there. It's a quick tap to the lips with the towel. Now two serves if she needs them. Serves are to her advantage. Oh, not yet. Not with a shot like that. Back against the ropes and Humelek playing the widest angle backhand we've seen from her and we've seen some wide angles. Fast, flat and wide. One championship point saved by the Turkish player. And she catches it once again, ties it back up. Deuce, there was a big lead in this game, but 5-0 from the start.
from 9-5 to 9-6. And now back to 10-10. For just a moment, Kasumi Ishikawa stood upright, and in that moment, the focus seemed to be gone. Humelek took advantage, pulled ahead in controlling the point. Now game point to Humelek. Right into the middle, perfectly placed. When you get a high ball, this is probably the best strategy unless you have a clear winner out of reach. Hit it right at the body, right at the crossover point. See this time and time again from the world's top players. Umelec is really sharpening up her shots in the counter rally. Fast pace of play has not bothered her. Another game point back to Humelec. A little bit off the top of the net and Humelec gets to see another game. She takes game four and sends us to a fifth game. Again, chance for Kasumi Ishikawa to close it out. Or will Humelec win? We'll see. Stay right here, game five after this. Game number five, Kasumi Ishikawa still with the lead. Three games to one. Zero one. Yeah. One all. Oh. I think Ishikawa really needs to stay pumped. Got her in the lead early on in the last game. Through most of the game even. One, two. Humelec's been stronger once the rallies have gotten faster, but opening there. Slightly softer receive from Ishikawa. Caused a little bit of trouble. Excellent play down the line. Reads the ball coming in, anticipates, closes it out. Full stroke from Ishikawa. Being run all around the court after the long serve into the backhand like the start of the match was quickly sent out wide. This is where Humelec is best, playing, as I mentioned before, deep to the corners, taking the ball quick off the bounce with the backhand, following up behind the player to the backhand, especially against the left-handed player. Left, three, two. Five. 
See a little conversation going on there with Gao Yu Yao. Again, since October 1st, 2016, the new coaching rule has been in effect. Coaches are able to coach whenever the ball is not in play. Assuming it doesn't stall the game too long. There's that serve. This is the new Ishikawa serve that's been so effective throughout the tournament, the shovel serve with underspin. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a slight variation of that same serve here. But it's a traditional pendulum and a backhand off the side of the table. We haven't seen too many angles like that created from Kasumi's backhand in some time. She's been playing more middle of the table Stepping around to get the forehand in. Playing forehands wide. Yeah. A strong lead, but it's the same lead pretty much that we saw last game. Quite close anyway. Smart play by Humelek. Bending away from Ishikawa and deep to the backhand. Second towel break of the game, just a quick hand dry. Yeah. Nine four. Nine four, she needs to hold on if Kasumi Ishikawa wants this title. Now is not the time to get cautious. Not the time to even think about the title itself, but winning this point. Yeah. Matrix, which pill are they taking? This is just another world out here, so fast back and forth, can barely even keep up. The spectators from the side are gonna be injured in the neck after this point. So match point here for Kasumi Ishikawa, but one goes to waste. Maybe not to waste, but it's fought off anyway by Humelek. Fast long serve, a strong response in Kasumi Ishikawa. A high five and big smiles with coach Gao Yu Yao. A handshake for Hume Elek. And a bow of thank you to the crowd and to the fans. Kasumi Ishikawa, the top seed, world rank number six at 23 years old, is the Swedish Open women's singles champion for 2016. What a performance it was. And you can see the absolute bliss out there. Hugs and hard work. Looked like there were some tears starting to come. For just a moment, that was the face. She can breathe, she can relax. A long week of hard work, training, and from the main draw all the way through, head coach Kurashima there will be present for the men's singles final. The men's singles final will be a dramatic one because Matthias Carlsen, hometown favorite from Sweden, the first Swedish player to make the men's singles final since 1998 when Jorgen Persson did it, is back, bringing pride to the nation and will be battling against Yuya Oshima of Japan. Stay right here, that match is coming up and you won't want to miss it. You're watching the Swedish Open 2016.